what's up? I'm Dave. Welcome to Real Brick Road, a place for people who are able to lead and willing to fail. So today I'm going to tell you how I came up with the name for my newest project, The Walker Challenge. If you're already really lost, take a break. The link, the first link down in the notes, go check it out and then come on back. Or if you like being lost, then you're in good hands. Why is the Walker Challenge called the Walker Challenge? Well, the simple answer is it's named after Maggie L. Walker. But I really have to tell you the longer version so that you understand why. So it all obviously starts with Maggie. She's born in 1864 in Richmond, Virginia, and she's the daughter of a former slave. Before we get into her life, let's just stop and recap the hand she's been dealt as she's about to step out into the world. She's a woman. She's African American. She's born in a place that actively promotes racial discrimination and she battles obesity her entire life. And that's not even the half of her struggles. Her father's murdered, her infant son dies, her husband is shot and killed, and she's diabetic. And that and probably before they even know what diabetes is. It's ouch, right? Now, not only is that not an altogether good environment for one to be successful, but it's, a, it's an actively bad one. And still, still, she becomes the leader of her church, the Order of St. Luke, in 1899 at the ripe old age of 35. And here's where she really puts her foot on the pedal. She found the St. Luke Herald, a newspaper to rally the community around the successes of its local chapters. And this newspaper, at its height, reaches over 50,000 people. Then, she founds the St. Luke Penny Savings Bank as a way to provide zero interest loans to African Americans. In doing so, she becomes the first African American woman to charter a bank. And this bank, at its height, reaches over a half a million customers. Not to mention it's one of the only ones to survive the Great Depression. And last but not least, she founds a department store as a way to secure employment for young African American women. For me, the story of Maggie Walker's life is the story that we should be telling students. No matter who you are, you can make a difference if you give yourself permission to lead. And when you have that permission, when you begin leading, there are bound to be shoots and ladders along your path Probably a lot of them. So let's use school as a training ground to teach people what to do when they see a ladder. And much more importantly, what to do when they fall from a chute. See, it turns out when we practice leading and failing in a risk-free setting, they both become much less intimidating in a risk-filled one. And that, in a rather large nutshell, is the goal of this project. Before I wrap this up, one final tip of the cap to Maggie Walker, her tireless leadership is the inspiration for this work. And of course, a big thank you to you as well. You watched this video instead of a new episode of Teen Mom or whatever they're showing on Spike TV, and that's super. If you'd like to join this pirate ship, I'd love to have you aboard. Check out the notes below, and you can see how to get in touch with me. Thanks a lot.